Exponential growth and decay are processes that arise naturally from the simplest types of dynamical systems. For example, bacteria growth, at least in its initial stages, can be well modeled by exponential growth. And one sees exponential decay in a model of penicillin clearance in the blood. Let's see how we get exponential growth and decay from the simplest dynamical systems. In general, we can write a discrete dynamical system in one dimension like this. x t plus 1 is some function of the value of the state variable x at the previous time step t. We call this form function iteration form because we just need to iterate the function f to compute subsequent values of the state variable x. What's the simplest form for f? Well, we could have f just be a constant c, but that's too boring. Let's not talk about that case. We should have f at least depend on x. The simplest form of such an f would be to have f be a linear function. For example, we could write f of x equal x times a constant r. In this case, we just multiply by r for each time step. Plugging this form of f into the dynamical system, we have that x of t plus 1 equals r times the previous value x of t. Let's add to this initial condition x at time 0, x naught is some known value. And for simplicity, let's make it positive. If r is greater than 1, then what do we know? Well, then we take the value x of t and multiply it by a number greater than 1 to get the future value x of t plus 1. In other words, as time progresses, we get larger and larger values of x. So if r is greater than 1, then we have growth. What about if r is between 0 and 1? Then we're multiplying x of t by a number less than 1, and so x of t plus 1 it will be smaller than x of t. So we have decay. The solution to this dynamical system is simply that x sub t is r to the t times the initial condition x naught. To get from time 0 to time t, we simply need to take the initial conditions and multiply by r t times. Hence, we see that the solution is an exponential. It'll be exponential growth if r is greater than 1, or exponential decay if r is between 0 and 1. These results are true if we write our dynamical system in function iteration form, where x of t plus 1 is equal to r times x sub t. Now here's where people often get confused. We have two ways that we sometimes write down a discrete dynamical system. One is this function iteration form. We can also write a discrete dynamical system in difference form. difference form focuses on the change from time t to time t plus 1. So x of t plus 1 minus x of t. This is change. And if we have a linear dynamical system, we could write that the change is some number r times x of t. And we can add our initial condition again, that x naught is a known value, which we'll assume to be positive. For this form of the dynamical system, What's the condition on the parameter r for exponential growth versus exponential decay? If we want growth, well, this means that x sub t plus 1 should be greater than x sub t, i.e., x sub t plus 1 minus x sub t should be positive. And since we're assuming our x's are positive, this is the same thing as r being positive. Because if r is positive, then this right-hand side is positive, and x t plus 1 minus x of t is positive. On the other hand, if we wanted decay, we would just need to have r less than 0. And in fact, let's make it greater than negative 1 so that we don't subtract off more than what we started with. This might be a little confusing. Here we have condition r greater than 0 for growth and 
r between minus 1 and 0 for decay. And over here, we had that capital R had to be greater than 1 for growth, and capital R had to be between 0 and 1 to get decay. How do we reconcile these two different viewpoints? Well, let's take our equation in difference form and just add x of t to both sides. If I take x of t plus 1 minus x of t and I add x of t, I get just x of t plus 1 equals r x of t plus x sub t. Well, we can factor out the x sub t, and we get r plus 1 times x sub t. Now, wait a minute. Now we've transformed our equation to the same form as we have over here. x sub t plus 1 is some number. In this case, it's little r plus 1 times x sub t. In fact, if we let capital R be the same thing as little r plus 1, we can see that our two equations are the same. And in fact, we can see that the solution for this side is, is x sub t equals little r plus 1 to the power of t times our initial conditions which is again the same as the solution right here if you replace little r plus 1 with big R.